Housekeeping before we start. Um, could you please all turn your mobile phones off? Apparently they activate fire alarms, so better turn them off. But in the event of a fire alarm, follow the event staff members to the evacuation point. You'll be told what to do. Don't follow me, otherwise you'll be in trouble. Uh, the toilets, male and female, are just outside. On the con concourse outside, the function room to the left. Well, good afternoon and welcome to the launch of National Missing Persons Week for 2011. Those of you that have travelled to Brisbane, which I didn't, wasn't aware of, a lot of you have come up from cold Canberra, so welcome to sunny Queensland. My name is Hayley Lewis and it's an honour for me to be your Master of Ceremonies for today's proceedings and to be involved in this very important campaign aimed at raising awareness of the issues and impacts of missing persons in Australia. I would also like to acknowledge members of the Queensland Parliament, representatives of the Australian Federal Police and the Queensland Police, families and friends of missing people. Similar to many typical Australian families, I also grew up in a tight-knit, loving family that went about life as per normal. We certainly had our ups and downs, like most families do, but like many, we never would have thought a horrible tragedy would happen to us. In 2004, my sister Tony, who was suffering from depression, sorry, I always get a bit teary when I talk about this, decided to end her life, leaving behind a husband and three little kids and a very loving family. The only, <clears throat> the only silver lining to my story is the fact that we did get that knock on the door to say that she had been located but had unfortunately passed away. This is why I am here today, along with the rest of you, because I care and I believe that campaigns such as this go a long way to reducing the incidents and impacts of missing persons, particularly the impacts on families and friends who are left behind. Like you, I'm here, said that, like you, I'm here today because I care. Well, I said that anyway. Now to officially launch National Missing Persons Week. On behalf of the Federal Minister for Home Affairs and Justice, and to tell us more about the phenomena, please welcome the Fem Federal Member for Morton, Mr Graham Perrin. Thank you, Hayley, for those um, courageous words. Uh, could I also begin by acknowledging the traditional owners and thank them for their continuing stewardship I uh, also acknowledge Betty Keenan, the Parliamentary Secretary for Emergency Services, AFP Deputy Commissioner Michael Thielen, Queensland Police Acting Commissioner, who's doing a lot of acting lately, uh, Ian, Stewart, Ian Stewart, the 1800 Reverse Managing Director, Mr Paul Jovens, and General Manager Operations, Mr Charles Slaughter, and thank you especially to the 1800 Reverse for your support. The, uh, also, the rep other representatives of the Australian Federal Police and of the Queensland Police, uh, particularly the families and particularly the families and friends of missing persons. I'd like to pay tribute to all of the families around Australia who have someone missing, and in particular, uh, I'd like to acknowledge the Devitt family for being directly, directly involved and associated with this very important public campaign, and for the Morgans who have also done so so much despite their loss. It is my pleasure today, I guess, uh, pleasure might be too strong a word, uh, but honour to represent the Minister for Home Affairs and Justice, the Honourable Brendan O'Connor, to launch National Missing Persons Week. Missing persons is a serious and complex issue, and there are three groups at highest risk of going missing. Those people living with, mental, with a mental illness, uh, older people with dementia or memory loss, and lastly, and perhaps most poignantly, young people. Any one of us can be affected by having someone we love become a missing person. And it is happening for somebody new every 15 minutes. For each person reported missing in Australia, at least a dozen more are affected, emotionally, physically, financially, or psychologically. For families, friends, colleagues, and teammates, the uncertainty over the whereabouts and safety of a loved one becomes a traumatic daily challenge. Family members are at the heart of campaigns such as the National Missing Persons Week. 
and this year's campaign reflects the broader effect on family, friends and the community. Without families such as the Devers publicly sharing their story and experiences, we cannot amplify this very important public service message. Their strength is remarkable and allows us to raise awareness across the broader Australian community. It is through this communication that there's better community understanding of the risks associated with becoming a missing person, greater understanding and empathy with families and sensitivity towards their experience, and a commitment across government and non-government agencies to work together to address this important social issue. While the emotional cost to families cannot be estimated, the financial cost to society associated with searching, with medical costs and loss of earning has been calculated to be around $100 million per year. But obviously on the personal level it is much more. This Australian Government is committed to helping find missing persons by providing funding for the National Missing Persons Coordination Centre within the, the AFP. This funding has enabled a more comprehensive response to missing persons and their families. The need for a strong national coordination function and leadership role to complement the operational role of the State and Territory Police Missing Persons Units was a catalyst for the establish establishment of the National Missing Persons Coordination Centre back in 2006. And I particularly commend the Honourable John Howard and his government for this initiative. I spoke earlier about those most at risk of going missing, including those living with a mental illness. The Australian Government is committed to ensuring that Australia has a sustainable and effective mental health system. To demonstrate this commitment, the Gillard Government has made mental health reform a priority uh, and obviously much more work needs to be done in this area, but it's a good start. And I give a special message as a former teacher to those young people who are considering going missing. And that is simply just to hang in there, to hang in there, to hold on, and things will improve. Things can improve. But today is obviously specifically about National Missing Persons Week and to raise awareness of the significant issues associated with missing persons across Australia. In addition to the Devitt family here today, there are other families who have come forward nationally to highlight the profiles of their missing loved ones. This work has been coordinated by the National Missing Persons Centre, but in conjunction with some of Australia's state and territory missing persons units. And I would like to thank all in these units, including our interstate colleagues, for their continuing work. To those distant families, again, I, I thank you for your courage in bringing forward your story in the hope that others will not have to live the same experience. And while it is bittersweet, I humbly officially launch Nation National Missing Persons Week 2011. Thank you. Thank you, Graham. As Graham said, previous missing person campaigns have focused on young people, people living with mental illness, as well as older people suffering from dementia or memory loss. And only last year the campaign focused on the need to dispel the myth that you have to wait 24 hours before reporting a loved one missing. This year's tagline, when someone goes missing, more than one person is lost, reflects the focus as decided by the police cons consultative group on missing, on missing people for 2011 campaigns. The impact of missing persons on, our fa on families, friends and the community. To talk more about the collaborative work of the Police Consultative Group on Missing Persons, the work of the National Missing Persons Coordination Centre, and to launch the 2011 television campaign, please welcome Australian Federal Police Deputy Commissioner, Michael Phelan. Ladies and gentlemen, before I proceed, I would also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today and acknowledge their uh, connection with the land, both um, past and present. Federal Member for Morton, Mr Graham Perrett, Ms Betty Kiernan, Parliamentary Secretary for the Minister of Emergency Services, Acting Queensland Police uh, Commissioner uh, Ian Stewart, um, 
one eight hundred reverse managing director sir paul jobbins and general manager operations mr charles slaughter other representatives from law enforcement agencies community groups government and non-government partners ladies and gentlemen it's a pleasure to be here with you today to launch at the launch of national missing persons week i would especially like to acknowledge the families and friends of missing persons who are here with us today especially the devitt family who are with us here today and who we'll hear from later on thank you and welcome as has been stated missing persons is a serious and complex issue each year in australia 35 000 people are reported missing that equates to one person every 15 minutes i would like to take a moment just to put that a little bit in to illustrate what i'm talking about in a tangible way and put that into perspective this stadium in which we're here today obviously has a very proud history for queenslanders but uh, what you may not know is that uh, the lang park uh, police citizens youth club was the first branch of the queensland police citizens youth welfare association when it opened its doors in 1949. this stadium has changed a lot since the lang park days and now has the capacity of 52 and a half thousand people some of you have proudly watched australia and queensland compete at this stadium as part of a capacity crowd if you can imagine two-thirds of that crowd 35,000 people being absent it puts it into perspective ladies and gentlemen that's the number of people that are reported missing every year in australia while the resolution rate is very encouraging with approximately 95 percent of missing persons located within a short period of time usually within a week the sad news is that hundreds of long-term missing persons cases are still to be resolved the focus of this year's campaign is the impact that this has on the families and friends of missing people and the missing people themselves unless you've experienced a loved one gone missing it's hard to understand the impact on those that were left behind the impact on the families friends and colleagues and on the missing persons themselves can be both profound and multifaceted for families not knowing what has happened to someone they love um, is devastating for the missing missing persons themselves it's often difficult to find support that are required to address their situation. I mentioned earlier that in Australia 35,000 people are reported missing each year. Research also goes on to show that for every person that goes missing, there are 12 people directly affected. This equates to approximately 420,000 people that are affected every year. It's an enormous impact across our society. You can imagine that would fill Suncorp Stadium eight times. Raising awareness about missing persons through campaigns is part of the core work of the National Missing Persons Coordination Centre, which is a function of the Australian Federal Police. Its mission is to reduce the incidence and impact of missing persons and to educate the Australian community about this significant issue. One way the centre does this is via the Missing Persons website, which is about to be relaunched, bringing a greater focus on the profiles of those that are reported missing. The National Missing Persons Coordination Centre works closely with missing persons units in each of the state and territory police forces. And it's, relation, it's this relationship that took us to Melbourne last year and has brought us here to Queensland to launch National Missing Persons Week for 2011. In conclusion, I would like to thank our government and non-government non partners, specifically the Queensland Police, who have worked with us to help raise awareness of the issues associated with missing persons. I would like to acknowledge and thank the radio and television networks for their support in delivering key messaging of the campaign across their networks. I would like to extend my personal thanks to our state and territory police forces who deal with missing person cases every day. And thank you again to the Devitt family for your courage in sharing your story with us here today. And thank you, Hayley Lewis, uh, for supporting the cause of missing persons through your involvement today. We all have a role to play in preventing and responding when people go missing. And I would like to like you now, if you could turn your attention to the screens, to view this year's campaign television community service announcement. Thank you. My brother's been missing for almost a year. My family just want to know he's alive. But then it's like it's high school. It doesn't make sense. He was a great worker. It's not the same without him. He's our only grandson. We'd like to know his son. I miss my husband so much. I can't believe he's gone. When someone goes missing, more than one person is lost. All the 
recognized by the attorney and government camera. Thank you, Michael. And once again, a very, very special thank you to those families who are with us today. Now to talk about Queensland's missing persons issues and a new initiative for Queensland families, please welcome Acting Commissioner Ian Stewart. Good afternoon, everyone, and um, again, I know that there's a few, uh, a few acknowledgements, but I'd ask you just to bear with me, because there are some very, very important people here today. Obviously, I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners and the land in which we meet today. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, the Federal Member for Morton, Graham Perrin, and Graham, it's always uh, great to see your support for law enforcement generally, but for this particular uh, initiative as well. The Parliamentary Secretary for Emergency Services, Betty Kim. Betty, thank you so much for being with us today uh, and representing our Minister for Municipal Police and Corrective Services. Obviously, the previous Speaker, uh, Deputy Commissioner Mike Peter and Mike, thanks for coming up out of cold camera to be up here today for this launch. But it is important, ladies and gentlemen, um, and in fact, it's so important that last year we asked the AFP whether they would consider launching uh, Missing Persons Week this year in Queensland, so that we can highlight the actual, the, the pain and hurt that occurs in this community when someone goes missing. Um, I'd like to also acknowledge uh, Acting Deputy Commissioner Peter Martin, who is here with us today from our organisation, and Assistant Commissioner Mike Condon, um, who led me in, and Mike's sitting somewhere in the audience, uh, hiding. Um, but also, where there is a range of other very, very important members of the AFP and the QPS who are here, uh, and from other agencies, from emergency services, Paul, thanks for being here today. Um, could I also uh, acknowledge um, Kenny Martin, uh, Crime Stoppers Chair for the whole of Queensland, who's in the audience tonight. As you look around this audience today, you really do see the importance of the partnerships that occur and the agencies that are involved, and I think it underpins the theme of this year's Missing Persons Week, that um, about the number of people who are affected, the number of agencies who are affected, and it harks back to last Friday, um, and my heart was in my mouth as we had another report of another young child, a young eight-year-old, who went missing on Friday afternoon, who thankfully was recovered safe and well on Saturday morning out in rural Queensland. But the number of agencies that got involved in that, uh, even in that short period of time, was just amazing but really does bring home to you the power of the partnerships that occur that, to make uh, those locations possible. Can I acknowledge uh, all of the people who are in this room today who have been personally affected uh, by loved ones going missing, and in particular the Devitt family, but again, our very, very good friends, Denise and Bruce Malcolm. Thank you for being here. Um, we're, as I said, we are really, really pleased to be able to host this year's National Missing Persons uh, launch here in Queensland. It is truly an important occasion, not just for Queensland, but for the whole of Australia. And this year's theme is quite apt when you consider how many people are affected when that person goes missing. There are many people in the room today who have been affected, as, a, as I've said, by someone closest to them going missing and not knowing what has happened to their brother, their sister, their mother, their father, their relative, their friend, or even a work colleague leaves them with a sense of emptiness, grief and frustration. Here in Queensland, approximately 6,000 persons go, were reported missing to police last financial year, but thankfully, with the assistance of the community and many, many members of the organisation sitting in this room today, we have located that 99.7% those people reported missing. While we wish, and our fervent wish is, that we could locate absolutely every one of those persons and bring them home to their families and friends, unfortunately, as Michael quite rightly pointed out, there are a large number of people who remain missing and those questions remain unanswered. Our Missing Persons Unit is an integral part of the Homicide Investigation Group and is relied upon to act quickly helping to locate, missing, to locate missing persons. To this end, 
we have, re we have created a multi-skilled investigative team of experienced detectives, intelligence officers, media and general duty staff to support the functions of the unit. The dedication of missing persons staff is paramount and a recent missing person case here in Queensland highlights the attention to detail that is required. Recently, the life of a prominent Australian scientist was saved. The gentleman in question suffered from a medical condition and had collapsed in a Brisbane office building that was empty during weekends. His whereabouts was unknown to his family and friends and was therefore reported missing when it was out of character for him not to make contact. The officer investigating the missing persons report organised a search of the building and on the third search, the semi-conscious man was located in a locked room several floors from where he was expected to be. Medical advice was that he would not have survived another 12 hours. Such is the value of having a dedicated missing persons unit with experience and knowledgeable staff. A high number of people reported missing in Queensland are you. To combat this phenomenon, the State Crime Operations Command's Missing Persons Unit has commenced a partnership with Reverse Phone Provider 1800 Reverse to target youth runaways in an effort to have them stay safe and stay in touch with family and friends when they have no other means of communication. 1800 Reverse provides a vital safety tool allowing people, in particular teenagers, to safely and easily stay connected with family and friends when they have no cash, no credit, or they haven't even got their mobile phone. The partnership is aimed at educating school-aged children and their parents to stay connected by letting family and friends know that they are safe and well, or simply running late. Research conducted by 1800 Reverse shows that reverse charge calling is mostly used by 13 to 17 year olds to stay connected to home when they're out of credit. The service allows users to make a phone call from fixed phones, pay phones and some mobiles and connect to land loans or mobiles 24 hours a day, seven days a week at, at a cost only to the receiver. This proactive initiative is a fantastic way to spread the message to kids to keep in touch and call home. By equipping children with the 1800 reverse number, it gives them an important backup option to help look after themselves and it also gives peace of mind to parents that they are safe. As a parent myself, I, I like to know my children are safe and spreading the word that kids can call home and we all know it doesn't matter what age those kids are, it's nice to have that uh, safety net. Um, 1800 Reverse CEO Paul Jobbins and General Manager Charles Slaughter are here today and I acknowledge them for their partnering with our Missing Persons Unit to help young people stay connected by expanding awareness of the service. And I have been advised that Missing Persons Units from around Australia have shown an interest in this initiative in targeting our youths to stay connected. I commend this initiative as yet another example of the commitment of our service to reducing the incidence of missing persons wherever possible. Thank you very much for listening this afternoon. Thank you very much, Acting Commissioner Stewart. I'm now lucky to all turn your attention to our second advertisement. I'm Karen James. I'm here to talk about my dad, Joseph John Hicks, who has been missing since Easter Sunday, 2008. He had left the retirement village at about 10 o'clock that morning, telling the staff that uh, he was coming to my house, which was a 10 minute walk for him. He never arrived, and we're still waiting. My dad's disappearance has left a big hole in the family, you know, the, the continual looking and, and, and chasing people because they look the same, they walk the same, you know, that definitely a nightmare that, that doesn't end. I think that the retirement village actually didn't get in touch with the police till about midday of that 
day, which meant he had been missing for about 17 hours before there was any um, contact with the police. When the police rescue got in touch with me that day, they were rather upset because they said, you know, 17 hours before they contacted, he could be in Thailand. If anyone ha has any worries or concerns that one of their family members not, not returned and, or, or late, act immediately, don't, don't wait, contact the police, contact the missing persons unit, you know, do everything sooner rather than later because they've been in accounts, I think. You shouldn't be embarrassed that you're concerned with your family member, but even if they turn up, that's good. It's okay that you started a search that you didn't need to, but it just play safe. I just hope it never happens to anyone else. But no one should have to go through this. Extensive inquiries since the time of his disappearance and subsequent investigations have failed to locate Michael. Michael is one of five siblings. He has two daughters, one beautiful little grandson, and numerous nieces and nephews. As you can see, the impact on this family alone well exceeds the estimated average of 12 people being directly affected when one person goes missing. To tell Michael's story in more detail, please welcome his brother, Acting Superintendent of the Queensland Fire and Emergency Services, Mr Kevin Demon. launch today and for everyone present as a member of their family missing, I cannot thank you enough on their behalf. Earlier this year I listened to the Acting Police Commissioner Ian Stewart for two hours as a symposium in Twin Waters. He was very articulate so this is a hard gig for me to follow him so I followed Richard Branson. The Mission Person Week is an annual event which takes part during the first week of August, which is a theme this year, when someone goes missing, more than one person is lost. When someone goes missing, it affects everyone in the family. It is a ripple effect impacting on the friends, family members, and colleagues while they grieve. Since starting in the emergency services in 1975, I have learned that people who grieve have no pretense. There is no camouflage. There is no energy to worry about what people are thinking about them or their family. And there are many reasons why people grieve and why they don't believe in themselves and maybe even in God. It can be for the illnesses, tragedy, heartbreak, suffering, injustice. It is our postmodern culture which runs doubt and disillusion very deep. There is no question in my mind that the world is filled with an appalling amount of suffering. We are impacted by this reality day on by the TV and by the media. As such, it is not surprising that people have difficult time reconciling the, this harsh reality. And Norway's incident was a good example. When Michael went missing, it touched each of my siblings, Gary, Frank, and his sister Trace, and their families, as well as myself and my family. 
our loss has been very personal and each person has coped in different ways to come to terms with this disappearance but i believe that in a year and a half unquestionably the hardest time was for jay and jamie's life both these girls are michael's daughters of whom he was very proud of. With Michael missing, his daughters are without a father to lead them, to praise them, love them, and to provide a shoulder to cry. And they were missing. They might never know what has happened to him. And so sadly, Jade's daughter Taylor, born in April last year, has yet to meet her grandfather for the first time. And this is a tragedy. I am without my youngest brother, with whom myself and my siblings had many times, happy times together. My wife and six daughters share memories also of Michael and the happy times when he came together to celebrate family occasions. On Christmas Day 2009 was the last time we all saw Michael together. We all celebrated a very memorable day, sharing tales of the past and hopes for the future. It was the last time we saw him. We went home from Russell Island and I drove him to Mars. And he talked about a road train that he was going to drive and his future with the trucking company that he was working for. I do not know what your challenges are. But for me, Christmas Day and the vacancy and the non-appearance that is left without Michael will be something that I and my family and the siblings will have to live with. He was always happy to go, happy go lucky person, and at the present time, Michael has not renewed his truck license or used his bank accounts in 18 months. But we live in hope that he's still alive. The Queensland Police Service, and in particular the Missing Person Unit. Under the leadership of Detective Senior Sergeant Damien Powell has been very professional and compassionate. And I have no doubt that he, it is his energy and persistence that has me speaking today at the National Miss, Missing Persons launch. I would also like to thank the media and especially the TV channels around the campaign, locally around the Prosecline and Macaya area this year. And the distribution of posters throughout Queensland has been very extensive. For this, we are truly grateful. To the two Rebecca's, to uh, Rebecca Glenn and to Rebecca Coates, I say thank you. And for the family, we say thank you for today's event and special thank you to Hayley for MC. Thank you.
see uh, Tilly and Nova couldn't make it, uh, particularly South that day, and I had no answer. I arrived home and tried to ring oh, three or four more times, still had no answer. I actually the alarm bell started to ring, so I hopped in the car, went up to Sheffield to find that the house was in darkness, the dog was still in the kennel, there was no car to be seen. So I kind of knew then and there that something wasn't quite right. Dad always would be home, he wouldn't be out and it was getting rather late. So we automatically knew that something was up. And my brother contacted the police straight away. We just dropped everything and we started searching first thing next morning because there's just no sign of him and it was very much out of character. When something like this happens, whatever you think, you go with your gut feeling. Because at the end of the day, you're kidding yourself if you waited or did something and then found out you could have done it earlier. So I waited those two hours for Dad to get home, but then once I went, he's not home and he should be home, I rang the police straight away. I think we covered absolutely everything when it came to my dad going missing. We're confident that we've done everything we can. We haven't got the result we want, but we're very confident that what we've done is everything that could possibly be done. At the end of the day, you have to be able to sit on the couch when you're at home by yourself and say, I did everything I possibly could have done to find that person. Waiting 24 hours and feeling guilty about it down the track is not going to help your mind. Because at the end of the day, if you're in a situation that we are, where we haven't got any closure or we haven't had any information on what else do you have. Thank you very much. Enjoy the afternoon.